I told you that something might be in there. And it might. And I know who you are. Right, so you know, you saw me, you should have said, okay, that's an inwood. Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops. We'll expose three cases of innocent individuals wrongfully arrested by law enforcement. Subscribe, like, and share to spread the anti-corruption message. If you like this video, press 1. On October 31st, 2023, the Stoddard Police Department received a 911 call from a woman alleging that her husband, Mr. Nathan, was displaying suicidal behavior and could pose a danger to himself. In response, multiple officers were dispatched to the reported location and promptly located Mr. Nathan in order to attempt to engage him regarding the call. The entire interaction was recorded on various body cameras and will analyze different perspectives of the footage to understand how the situation escalated so dramatically. Hey, Bob. Are you Nathan? Are, is your name Nathan? Hey, so your wife wanted us to check on you. My wife? Yeah. Are you going through something? Um... Yeah, but Can you put your hands out of your pocket for me? No, you're good. No, no. Hey, I need you to come back over here and talk to me, though. That's a order. Hey, sir, sir, I'm just trying to listen. We're just doing a welfare check on you. Yes, I might be in Yes, not right now. I need to talk to you. He don't want to talk. Hey, come here. Officer Johnson initiated a wellness check on Mr. Nathan, a standard procedure aimed at ensuring the safety of individuals who may be in distress. Despite having the authority to conduct the check, Mr. Nathan was not required to interact with the officers as he was neither detained nor obligated to speak to them under Arkansas law. The law allows law enforcement officers to detain individuals reasonably suspected of committing or about to commit a crime involving danger or property damage. However, Sergeant Williams implied a disregard for Mr. Nathan's rights by suggesting an intention to forcibly detain him, even if he chose not to engage with the officers. Come here. Well, if you're suicidal, that is a crime. It's a crime to be suicidal. It is. Well, I'm not suicidal, so. Well, that's not what we got. Well, that's so you not have your my ID problem. On you. Nope. You're going to go to jail. Walk then, away. Then take to jail. If you walk away from me, you're going to jail. Really? Yes. What? Obstruction. Away. So keep so, arguing. I'm being detained for what? We got a call. We're here to talk to you. I don't care if you want to talk to us or not. Okay. So you're just going to keep me out in the cold? I will. So what is going on? I'm not talking to you. Without any further questions. That's fine. Go ahead and turn around and shake my back. Oh, boy, you can detain me without handcuffs. I think you're just intimidating me. Alright. It's on the water. Well, go on to this. Alright. Yeah. Sergeant Williams reported that other officers ignored Mr. Nathan's right to remain silent and pressured him to engage, which violated his constitutional rights. People have the right to refuse to speak to law enforcement without facing punishment, and it's wise to consult with a lawyer before answering questions. Only a judge can order someone to answer questions. However, Mr. Nathan was punished for exercising his right to remain silent, which is protected by the Fifth Amendment. 
Additionally, Sergeant Williams falsely claimed that being suicidal was a crime and used it as a reason for Mr. Nathan's detention. Suicide is not a crime in the United States, and Mr. Nathan's detention seems to be unlawful since he hadn't committed any offense. The officer's actions suggest an intolerance towards individuals exercising their constitutional rights. Do you have anything that's going to post your stack? Oh. You don't know? Probably. Okay. If there is anything in there, can you please let us know? Hey, Nathan. That's fine, because if anything does cut me, that's okay. <laughs> really? Really? You're on I told you that something might be in there, and it might. Sorry, why are you searching it? Huh? Why are you? Because this is this is more than Terry. Yes, it is. Or, I'm obviously not obstructing you. You obviously were. Okay. Because when you walk away from us, when we're here legally, and you were detained, that is obstruction. You walk away from him. You were 100% walking away from him. At first, that was before you told me I was detained. And it will show on your body cam. Yeah, you're just violating my. Well, there's no violation of rights when you're under arrest. <laughs> arrest. It's a false arrest. Are you done? I'm not done. Just take me to. Really? Really. I six wide open. But no, I really didn't get to look at this car. Because when you pulled up and asked me who was he walking, I was like, I never saw it. Never heard him. Went around to the car. I guess he was on <laughs> this side of that container. Yeah. Because that's his car back there. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. I need some meat on my bone. I'm perfect tablets. Mr. Nathan was unfairly arrested by Sergeant Williams on a charge of obstruction, despite Mr. Nathan not actually doing anything that would warrant such a charge. The arrest came after Sergeant Williams demanded Mr. Nathan's identification and threatened him with arrest if he tried to leave. However, Mr. Nathan did not impede any governmental operations, refuse to provide information, disobey court orders, or give false identification to law enforcement, actions which would constitute obstruction. Moreover, the arrest led to an illegal search, violating Mr. Nathan's Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable searches and seizures. Did you see anything in the car? 
Fox is looking into it. So, uh, not much. Did you ever even hear his store? That's blood pressure. That's what she was talking about. Didn't open. Who's Dennis Lassiter? Not him. Definitely not him. Definitely not. What the heck is that in there? I didn't pull him out. To we'll find out. I have it pulled out. Let me go look. One. Two. I six. I six. Wide oval. But no, I really didn't get to look at this car because when you pulled up and asked me who was he walking, I was like, I never saw him. Never heard him. Went around to the car. I guess he was on <laughs> this side of that container. Yeah. Because that's his car back there. Like that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I need some meat on my bone. Ibuprofen tablets. See? Hydrochloride oxy could be. Well, no, it doesn't have the slash, right? Yeah, it has slash. Oh, like that? Yeah. Okay. It's, um. Slip my pan oxy code on hydrochloride. 500 milligrams is what it says on the bottle. Yeah? Yeah. I think you charge them with it. He ignored my first beat. Yeah. Oxycodone. Nope. It's what it says in the box. Oh, I'm fine. It's just blood pressure meds, but definitely not his prescription. In the video, three cops were fixated on checking out an orange pill bottle for a while. Turns out, it held non-narcotic blood pressure pills belonging to Mr. Nathan's father-in-law, who lived with him. But when Mr. Nathan's wife hinted that he might have taken the bottle from their house, the cops used it to make up another charge against him. Plus, Officer Johnson decided to badmouth Mr. Nathan to his employer before leaving the scene. This one? Yeah. Okay, it's, it's not you. So we uh, came over here to do a welfare check on a Nathan Argent. Um, I don't have his driver's license. Hold on. He drives a Prius with a rack. Camera go. Okay. Okay. He's been arrested. Oh. Okay. So we came over here to do a welfare check. We, his wife said that he's been threatening to kill himself. That she's been trying to beg oh, him to come home. Whoa. I knew there's something wrong with him. Um, the last couple of days of the project, he was off. So um, he was walking away from his car whenever he pulled up. And I asked the other officer, you know, is that him? She was like, I never even saw that person. So I did my little whoop whoop at him, ignored it, did it two more times. He looked back and kept on walking, refused to talk to me. You know, hey, I need to know if you're okay. I ain't got to talk to you. Walks off. So he's going to jail. Okay. I don't know what you want to do with this car out there. Oh, uh, I mean, dude's like two hours away from home. Yeah, but, Atkins or Elkins, something like uh, that. What's, when will he be released? Uh, I personally don't know if the jail will be holding misdemeanors, so it's possible that, that he'll go down there to DeWitt and just get OR. But he'll be on the streets and DeWitt. But, um, How far is that away? Like an hour? 30 minutes? It's, yeah, it's 25 miles. It's not, it's not too terrible. But I, I do suggest that, I mean, I'm going to call his wife when we're done here because he was very agitated with us when Oh, yeah. Had an attitude when I asked to get his hands out of his pockets because, you know, we were told that he likes to carry knives and sharp objects. Went to pat him down. Is there anything in here that's going to stick or poke me? You'll find out. Oh, wow. So, um. Yeah, that's not, that's not something you want to hear. Yeah. Can we move it? Oh, okay. oh, oh. We, no, he's headed to jail now. Oh, he's already left? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to let you know because I know he was headed back up in here and he's not going to be coming back. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little upset with you now. I'm so. Now, listen. Now, you, now, you're basically now. done in here. Actually, it's going to be these people mad at you because the family's Oh, I'm going to be the big boss, Kevin Newton. <laughs> I don't want to get on his bad side right. either. But, no, it's, um, it, stuff happens. It's understandable. You got to do what you got to do. So. Apparently, well, he has a history of like mental health issues, and he had medication in his pocket that <clears> didn't have his name on the bottle. It's like a Daniel F something. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll contact Ryan, my boss, and let him know so they can see somebody else out Yeah, because he's third party of a you. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want to. You know, we wouldn't. We wouldn't go as far as that one. Yeah. I just thought you were going to have to figure out how to get back. It would have been nice if I could have moved him before you hold him off. Yeah. yeah.
Officer Johnson went beyond her authority by entering Mr. Nathan's workplace without justification and speaking negatively about him to his employers. This led to Mr. Nathan being arrested on questionable charges of obstructing governmental operations and theft, based on a suspicion that he took pills from his wife's home. Despite the charges being unfounded, he ended up spending time in jail and lost his job while fighting against them. Now he's looking to sue the Stogard Police Department and the officers involved for false imprisonment and defamation. Next video on December of 2021, which depicted Brandon and his friends' encounter with Officer Nance of the Mount Olive Police Department, they were pulled over for supposedly not using a turn signal, which seemed to be a pretextual stop and fishing expedition. The video starts with Brandon questioning why he, as a passenger, would need to identify himself. Ah, you was a, you was what, a joke. What the hell you are? You was a joke, man. So you can give me a driver's license, I'm going to drag you out the car. You to identify from the state of North Carolina. Why though? Well, what did, did I do? He did not what did I do? No, you did not commit a crime, bro. I'm so why are y'all bothering him? Do I know did who he is? Why are y'all bothering him? You don't have to. He didn't commit a crime. In this situation, the officers stopped Brandon even though they didn't suspect him of any crime, simply because they didn't recognize him. They claimed they had the right to demand his identification because they were law enforcement officers. However, this action shows a misunderstanding of civil rights and the limits of their authority under the Constitution. Typically, officers can only ask for identification from the driver during a traffic stop unless they suspect the passenger of being involved in criminal activity or a violation. The officer's belief that they could invade Brandon's privacy just because he was there is seen as authoritarian and goes against American values. As a result, they asked Brandon to get out of the vehicle. You don't have to know who he is. Yes, I do. No, you don't. He did not commit any crime whatsoever. He's still side to side of the vehicle. So what? He, I didn't do anything. What did I do? Uh, Why look, are you pulling you me over, man? A, I just told you. You didn't use your turn signal. Yeah, I did use it. You, was, you turned around and followed me from back there. I saw you guys, man. Who I know what's going on, man. Get out of the car. Get out of the car if you're not giving me a driver's license. Come on, man. I don't have any driver's license. Give me right. your ID card then. For what? According to U.S. Supreme Court rulings, police officers can legally ask both the driver and passengers to step out of a vehicle during a traffic stop to ensure their safety. This applies even if the stop is for a minor offense, like failing to signal. Additionally, officers can conduct a pat-down search if they have a reasonable suspicion that anyone in the vehicle poses a threat. However, they can only search or demand identification from a passenger like Brandon if they have a specific reason to suspect him of a crime, which isn't the case here. No, I'm done. Get out. No, I am. No, too late. Let them do what they got to do, man. So, uh, so yeah, come on, fresh, come on. fresh charges on it. Yeah, come on. That's wrong. Y'all know y'all wrong. All he used was ID. Yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. Y'all know the law. He police officer. Y'all know the law. He's a passenger. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't commit any crimes. And you're messing with this guy. You are, obviously, because you tried to follow me from back there, man. That's wrong, brother. How long have we known each other? That's what I'm telling you, man. Okay. Why are you doing this, man? All I did You know I was going listen, home, listen, brother. Listen, listen. Have I ever messed with you before? Yeah, no, but you are now. I don't know who you, I didn't know who you were. Yes, you were. You do know my car, man. No, I did not. You didn't have this and, car and then, time. And then you, then you turned okay. around and tried to follow me. I saw y'all. I turned around. I saw y'all. No, you, you, you turned, you now, followed me. Now all your boy had to do is You went comply. down Williamson Street and tried to turn, and tried to catch me coming home, man. I saw y'all, man. I know exactly where you live. I know at. your I tactics. Set up I know your house. Your, yeah, I know your tactics. Why turn it down and try to follow me? So all you had to do is tell your boy. Why? To hand me his He's a passenger, license. man. You know I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay, and I know who you are. Right. So you know you saw me. No you should have said, okay, Listen, that's an He's good. He's, okay. good. He's going home. Do I know who he is? It don't matter, man. Doesn't How do I know matter. Didn't kill somebody. I don't know who he is. How do I know if he's not a fake officer? He can identify himself. Just like I identified Listen, myself. Okay, don't you know the law, man? Why do you have to identify himself, man? He, because hey, he I hasn't don't know committed a crime. He... In June 2022, a lawsuit was filed against Officer Nance and the Mount Olive Police Department for alleged misconduct during a vehicle stop. The lawsuit claims that Officer Nance acted unreasonably by forcefully searching Brandon without probable cause, even though Brandon didn't have his ID. Officer Nance allegedly handcuffed Brandon and searched his pockets without justification. Despite finding nothing illegal, Officer Nance kept Brandon restrained and argued about his authority. He had to identify himself, man. He, because hey, I he don't hasn't know committed a crime. Who he is. You
In this situation, a lawsuit has been filed against Officer Nance and two other officers for allegedly making an illegal traffic stop. The lawsuit claims that Officer Nance and the other officers said it was normal procedure, even though they were misinformed. Brandon, the person filing the lawsuit, informed the department about the possibility of legal action after talking to the chief. There is footage from body cameras and dash cameras, but it hasn't been made public. The lawsuit argues that the footage proves the vehicle used its turn signal, which means the traffic stop wasn't justified. It's unclear whether the officers have faced any consequences for their actions, and the lawsuit is still ongoing. More updates will be provided as the situation progresses. Go, man. Instead of just further and further and further. No, because that's how stuff happens, man. You got them there prolonging them just so you can get mad so y'all can lock them up. You know, you got him here for what? He has no warrants. Why is he still here? Why is he still here? He has no warrants. Why is he still here, man? I'm just saying, man, y'all wrong, man. Let the man go, man. He didn't do anything wrong, man. He didn't do anything wrong, sir. Can we go home, please? As soon as he gets talking. No, you're the one talking, man. Let the man go. You see, you pissing him off for nothing. I'm taking jail right now. Why? I said I did. Why? Obstruction. We obstruction what? We did anything. We did nothing wrong. Obstruction of what? You know that's not by law, man. You know it's not. Okay, what's it ain't? It's not, brother. It's not. Then you find You take him out my car and put him in handcuffs, yeah. man, before you even knew who he was. Exactly. You cannot do that. You can't do that. Right, well, if you don't think I can. You can't do that. Hey, listen. I promise you, if you can't you do that. If you don't think I can, then go to the police department. No, I'm not going to the police department. Okay, I'm going well, further than that. Okay. I'm going further than that. Best of luck to you, boss. And that's what I'm saying. Best of luck to me, right? And that's how y'all treat the community? You drag people out their car, and then you pull off and say, best of luck? That's what's going on in the town of Mount Olive? What are your thoughts on this case? Next video. On the summer of 2021, around midnight, officers from the Spokane Police Department were summoned to a nearby bar following reports of a potential altercation. The officer's remark is made in an unclear context, but it seems that he deliberately looks at his partner's body camera right after the unprofessional comment. His partner responds to this. You can't have nice shit. Several officers saunter into the parking lot across the street and mingle with the crowds, some of whom utilize the lot as their own personal scooter track. Some customers utilize the space for simply hanging out, while others attempt to soothe their intoxicated friends before escorting them home. No, y'all, y'all are just being extra. I already told them. I respect them. I already told them I respect them. I'm Nicole. Eventually, the bar shuts down and the atmosphere calms. As the parking lot clears out, a police officer approaches a man sitting in his car. Shortly after, a woman named Erica shows up, recording with her cell phone. Despite the presence of several others in the parking lot and the crowds the officers had been socializing with for several hours, they now seem to be targeting Erica. She asserts that it was simply because she was filming. Are my feelings hurt? Or are you, what are you, what are you 
The arrest report alleges that she intruded upon an investigation despite being informed by several officers that she was trespassing and needed to vacate the parking lot. However, the videos they released failed to clearly show if she was instructed to leave, echoing the circumstances of Travis Hines' recent arrest as claimed by the McCracken Sheriff's Office. The Spokane Police assert in their report that the parking lot personnel have an arrangement with the department, permitting officers to remove individuals from the property on behalf of the owner. Would you like Jacqueline to have your possessions? Yeah, I'd love that. Okay, what else do you have on you that you'd like her to have? In your, in your back pocket, you have stuff in your back pocket. What would you want? Like? Like you good? So, okay, you want her to have your phone or you want to keep it? I would love to keep it. Okay, she wants to keep it. Okay, good. No, it'll be right here in your It's all going to go no, in your no, pocket. No, it's not in my possession if you're holding it. Well, it's in my possession I? right now because you're in custody. Am I keeping it or? Yeah, it'll go yeah. with you. Absolutely. If I'm keeping it, I would like it in my hand. Well, it's going to be in my hand. So when you just... That's not keeping it. Well, Can I have it in my hand? No, you no. cannot. Shortly after, a female officer shows up to conduct a search and transport Erica. There's our transport. Why are you acting like a child? She's a child. Yeah, I know. 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 American flag for me, love it, love it. Okay. You want to do the search for us? Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, let's go do the search. In short, Erica was arrested for trespassing, which could have been resolved with a citation. During her time in jail, she claims jail staff mentioned her foster children unnecessarily, and she noticed items missing from her belongings upon release. Refusing to sign a release for the missing items led to further detention. 
The charges were dropped due to lack of evidence, leading Erica to sue the city and county for various violations, resulting in a $57,000 settlement. She alleged her arrest was due to filming officers, but the police claimed they don't mind being filmed. However, the footage provided was incomplete, raising concerns about transparency. It's unclear if officers issued a trespass warning before her arrest. While some officers may not mind being filmed, the incomplete footage raises accountability and transparency issues. Um, I'm not going to give you my idea. I have no reason to. But you're on the hot water. On March 18th, 2022, I released a video showcasing Mr. Hartford, who, a year earlier, had visited Calvary Chapel in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He began by exchanging greetings with the parking attendants and then positioned himself on the public sidewalk, holding a sign that was visible to the incoming congregation. I'm trying to lead people to Jesus by correcting some of the oppositions to his teaching. While exercising his religious freedom by filming and assembling, Mr. Hartford was confronted, accosted, and physically assaulted by Chattanooga Police Sergeant Atwell and the leader responsible for overseeing chapel services and providing pastoral care, Darren Delaney. I know you're smart enough to where I see that you're standing on private, uh, on public property, it's a sidewalk, but man, can we not just agree today maybe not to have this happen while I have our congregation? For the consideration of God Almighty and, and the congregation that comes here, church, can we just put this thing away today? You're making a scene right now, aren't you? Sergeant, am I correct in my, my, my understanding, sir, of the law? I know exactly who you are, bro. You don't think I remember who you are. When I get done doing what I'm doing, I'll call you or email you. Just leave me your contact information and we'll go from there. No, this is not working well for me. Listen, man, can you give me that? Did you just not let me go to that place? I'm asking you as a man to man. There's no reason. No, to stop no, no. This. Preach from the rooftops. Well, number one, you're on the street corner. Okay, it was wrong. Well, and your message is going to fall on deaf ears here. Okay. It might, but it also might fall on some good ground and and bring forth so, fruit. So listen, man. Nobody here is paying any attention to your sign. Okay. I think I'm making a big uh, uh, demonstration. Did you see that? I'm tired. Of, number one, you don't have my permission to film me. So don't film can, me anymore. I can film you all I want. I said no, sir. Okay. Hey, no. don't touch my stuff. Get off my property. Please, that, I'm not on your property. Get off my property, dude. I'm not on your property. Listen, man, leave. Hey, Sarge, can you call a district car? I think we have a public uh, problem here right now with yeah. me and him. Thank you, sir. The complete video is available here if you wish to view the entire interaction. This is after Sergeant Atwell remains passive and takes no action to intervene while witnessing Mr. Hartford being assaulted and his belongings being tampered with by the church leaders. Mr. Hartford then moves to the front of the church shortly after Officer Elliot arrives on the scene. Hey, brother. Hey, come here and talk to me. Hey, hey how are you doing? Name and badge number, please. You got an ID on you? Name and badge number. Elliot, 1099. What's your, what's your, where's your ID, bro? Uh, that's irrelevant. Have I committed a crime? Yeah, you're trespassing. You're refusing to leave, man. Uh, I'm on public property. This is no, a sidewalk. You're on church property. Let me see your ID. This is a sidewalk. Let me see your ID. You need your ID or you're going to go to jail. Um, this is a sidewalk. I don't know what you're talking about. Dude, I need your ID. Okay, okay. Well, maybe you're going to give me your ID or you're going to go to jail? Um, I'm not going to give you my ID. I have no reason to. Put your behind Even though the video clearly shows that Mr. Hartford was on the public sidewalk, Officer Elliot proceeds to arrest him for criminal trespass. The sidewalk, so I don't see why I'm being arrested. Well, you're refusing to give me your ID. You have to identify yourself. And I'll put you're not a stop and ID state. What's your name? I'm not well, why are you so upset at this church, man? I'm not upset at all. What are you doing? At? I'm trying to make a theological point that I wasn't allowed to make on their property. Are you, are you, you want to step right here? No, no. Okay. I think Sergeant Atwell called in about him. Yeah. I'll go talk to him, so. No. Come here, man. Is he giving you lip? No. We were having a Bible study. 
Yeah, in a Bible study? I, I object to that. To what? Unreasonable searches and seizures. Well, I've got a reason to detain you and arrest you right now for my trespass refusing to identify yourself. Well, I was going to You were on a church property. They called in about you, man. The part-time officer working. I have, on, I have on film. one of our sergeants. Yeah, I got it all on film, too. You know what? This is at the camera, too. Okay? Mm -hmm. Get a new job, dude. Okay. Good job? Maybe. Maybe you can go in there and talk to the pastor if you have a theological point to try to make. Actually, there's a hard, uh, I there's a, it's a very reasonable church. There's a bunch of cool guys there. Maybe Mr. Hartford would have thought about it if the leadership member hadn't attempted to suppress his First Amendment rights, first physically, and now through the authority of State Officer Elliot. Elliot is now disclosing to a fellow member of the church, which Mr. Hartford also attends. This revelation could have been one of the factors contributing to Mr. Hartford's unjust arrest for simply standing on a sidewalk. Hey, I'm just gonna take it for trespassing. I go here, man. That, that's kind of ridiculous. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, Pastor Frank and all those guys—they're extremely, you know, they they talk to the dude. You know, I mean, so would Chaplain. You know, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm so frustrated with him right now, but. Um, Delaney, like, they have no problem talking to him, but maybe he's got some kind of theological thing he wants to discuss. Well, uh, he, he said, he, it's, I think it was Pastor Frank told me that he came in and then just started trying to basically disrupt stuff and hand out pamphlets that teach the opposite, and, you know, a church, church can't... Of what the church teaches. Yeah, you yeah. can't, a church is basically supposed to stamp that out anyway, I mean, because you can't have somebody come and say, and, hey... Is the Apostle Paul taught the opposite of what Jesus taught? Uh... But I, I had no problem talking with him out here. No, and I'm uh, the same way, but he's like, he's already causing a problem. He's not leaving. He's like, I pulled around and he's like filming people walking in yeah. to, to the service. I'm like, this. And he stopped recording. Like, he stopped recording as as, with me. As soon as he saw me, he, well, he turned it off. Or, did he turn? I thought he turned I think it back, he turned on. back on because yeah. he just, like, realized this was a confrontation kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, but, but, I mean, I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm he, gonna he didn't really want to explain to me what his doctor was, what he wanted, what he taught. It's just, he yeah, just, he used a lot of vague platitudes, kind of like it's darkness in there, and you know, it, it's darkness. Yeah, I, I tried to ask him, you know, how how you're saved, and what's you know, basically, you tell me how I can be saved. I don't want to know that. And he he, well, it boiled down to works. So I tell him. So what that means, you know, like. <laughs> this church of all churches is open to discussion, but the way he's going yeah. about it is... Well, it's a good sign that somebody's out here, really, because uh, he says wherever uh, the truth is taught, well, Satan's going to send in his workers to, to disrupt, so it's a good sign when you get in people that fight you. Yeah, this, uh, is, this is retarded, man. <laughs> I think he's a, is he a welder or something, because it looks... He made that one. I got one man custody over here at Calvary Chapel. Another church staff member approaches the officer as he finishes speaking with Mr. Hartford. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. No, I don't think you're oh, I found that, yeah, he, he's not even a staff member here. He, <laughs> the guy at my church? Yeah. He's going to die. Yeah. Away. Well, he was, I think he was trying to talk to him, but try to get the guy to leave, too. Yeah. And I mean, the guy's a real jerk. He's like filming, you know, Dad. people walking in, you know, like, you know, I'm like, that sign is like the Apostle Paul teaches the opposite of what Jesus teaches. I'm like, and then he wouldn't even give me his name. He's like, oh, I'm trying to have a theological, whatever, yeah, you know, discussion or something like that. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, bro, of all churches, uh, this church would be like open to a discussion, but like, yeah. you put it, you went way past the line. So, but, um, no, I'm just, I hate being on this corner right here. Because it's a blind corner at to a point, but I, what's funny is I was walking towards the back because it was like, what well, he doesn't realize this Walgreens is our property. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. Oh, but, I know. Hey, thank you. Thanks for being cool. Yeah, no problem. Oh, really? Yeah, we're. If you're ever. I go to church here, so I don't. I don't Okay. Like, I, I, I thought you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so. That's why I was kind of coming. I was like, all right. <laughs> you like, messing with my church? <laughs> well, he's not going to be doing that this morning because I can't come to church today because i got to work. So he's not going to be pissing off everybody else here that's at church trying to just, you know, serve and worship Jesus. I was like, you're going to make a paycheck today on your extra job. 
Like, no, he doesn't have to, man. He should be able to just hang out at the church. Mr. Hartford faced criminal trespassing charges despite never setting foot on the church grounds. The charges were swiftly dropped, but his sign and camera recordings were held as evidence for almost a year. He subsequently filed a pro C lawsuit under 42 U.S. Code Section 1983 against Officer Elliott, citing unlawful search and seizure, deprivation of rights under color of law, unlawful arrest, and intentional slander. Later, he retained an attorney to finalize the lawsuit and included the city in the legal action, concerned about the political power wielded by churches nationwide. Recently, he agreed to settle for an undisclosed sum. Additionally, he decided not to pursue charges against Pastor Darren Delaney. Neither he nor any other church staff or members have issued an apology or statement regarding the unprofessional behavior of their member, Darren, who violated Mr. Hartford's constitutional rights and abused state power to punish him for exercising his freedoms. On April 15, 2023, a man named Mr. Xavier was strolling along a sidewalk in Texas when he suddenly observed a patrol car pull up and stop directly behind him. Little did he realize that the officer who was about to emerge was entirely ignorant of the law and was about to unlawfully detain him for an extended period without cause. It's crucial to note that Mr. Xavier is 24 years old and well beyond the legal age, which becomes relevant very soon. I don't consent to uh, I'm not searching you. He seized my property. I did not. I, I unholstered you and I put it That's right here. That's seizing okay. it. Okay. took it from me. 
can do this all day. And 3802. Okay. You know, so you know 3802. Go ahead. Let me hear. What does it say? You go ahead. What is the premise on which I have to, which on which I have to ID? What's that? What's the premise on which I have to ID? If oh. I was arrested, not you're not. You're not arrested. You're being detained, and I, and that, as a peace officer, you're have me you're for what I have the right to request ID from you and to obtain ID from you for anybody that I think might be violating Texas open law here. Okay. At this juncture, the officer has repeatedly requested identification from Mr. Xavier, emphasizing its necessity for compliance and highlighting that refusal would constitute a violation of Texas law. Let's unpack this. Assuming Mr. Xavier was lawfully detained even then under Texas law, one is not obliged to furnish any form of identification. Hence, the officer's insistence was evidently erroneous and infringed upon Mr. Xavier's rights. According to Section 38.02 of the Texas Penal Code, an individual only commits an offense if they intentionally withhold their name, residential address, or date of birth from a peace officer who has lawfully arrested them and requested such information. In simpler terms, Mr. Xavier would only be compelled to provide identification if he were lawfully arrested, not merely detained. This underscores the officer's lack of familiarity with the very statutes he is tasked with enforcing. Furthermore, if the officer were to proceed with Mr. Xavier's arrest, it would constitute another unlawful action, lacking probable cause or evidence that Mr. Xavier was definitively under 21 years of age. You refuse an ID yourself. I don't know if you're 21 or not. Right? What's right. your name? Officer Pacheco. It's right here. Pacheco? Okay. okay. So just relax. I'm just going to patch you down for any other weapons. I'm not going to search you. Okay? Is that Leatherman knife or? No, I, uh, I don't know. It might be my wallet. I, I don't know. Can't do it again. That might be it felt, be, well, it felt like a long, square. Yeah, well, it felt like a, like a long metal piece. It should be square, right? I know. As long as it's not a gun. I'll give you permission to take it out and check with my DD now. That you okay, are now. Yeah. Okay. Now, now that you now, already put me in this now, situation. Now, now you want to cooperate. Yeah, because you're unlawfully detaining me. So it's your mag. That's okay. mag. Uh, check my front pocket. Or on my breast. My breast pocket. Nothing? Your breast You don't have a breast pocket. I, yeah, so you're on the inside. I thought inside. it was in there. All right, right.
Yeah. I don't know. How old is I at the time, do you reckon? Uh, yeah. It was two years ago. Or something, know. yeah. Well, he refused ID initially. But you know I'm not underage. 16. No. I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm not saying you should have him. He didn't know. <laughs> I know. In the video, a second officer, who happened to be the supervisor of the first officer, arrived at the scene. Mr. Xavier quickly recognized her from a prior interaction. What's intriguing is that the supervisor essentially corroborated the fact that Mr. Xavier was indeed not underage. In other words, she dispelled the alleged suspicion that the first officer had. Logically speaking, the first officer should now release Mr. Xavier from unlawful detention and allow him to continue his night, right? Well, apparently not. Watch as he continues to insist that Mr. Xavier identify himself to prove that he is indeed over the age of 21, even though his superior already confirmed that. 16, 18, doesn't matter, 21 is right. the age limit, correct? Yep. So you and I both know that. And I'm now, 21 or older. Okay, but now you don't have a way to prove it because you don't have an idea. I asked you for your idea. I don't so you have to show me. I just explained to you why you have to show me just ID. Just because I look at it? You can say that for anyone. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, as a peace officer, if I am suspicious that somebody is unlawfully carrying a firearm, a sidearm, specifically a sidearm, not a rifle, not a samurai sword, not a pocket knife, but a sidearm pistol. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. If I'm suspicious of anybody that may be violating, all right, the age mm -hmm. requirement, which is 21, I can request ID. I'm well within my rights to do that. Have okay, then, then you get detained until I can confirm who, who your so identity you is. Well, well, how about you start giving me your name and date of birth and that would help. How is that, how is that not? Because now I can confirm who you are and what your age is. You just take any, it's Fourth Amendment, Fourth Amendment violation. How is it you know, you know Secure, Securing my person and papers. Are you going to help yeah, us out so we can wrap this up? Well, if you tell me you're wasting my that's time. I didn't, I didn't bring you in. Okay. It's, it's over 50. It is over 50. Okay. 1999. Mr. Xavier, what did you last? You, that's all you need. October 5th, 1999. Oh, I need a last name. Because if you have an you know, ID. So you're going to run it? If you have, yeah, I'm going to run it, but I can't run it just with first name. I need a last no, name, too. I'm telling you, I was running 99. In his own words, the officer essentially revealed his true intention of keeping Mr. Xavier detained, even though the initial suspicion had dissipated. He aimed to run Mr. Xavier's ID through the system. However, the question arises, why would he do so when no crime had been committed? Was he attempting to uncover another justification to prolong the unjust ordeal further? Whatever the reason, it is now evident that the officer continued to violate Mr. Xavier's Fourth Amendment rights. What exacerbates this situation is that Mr. Xavier even provided the officer with his complete date of birth and first name, yet the officer appeared dissatisfied that Mr. Xavier did not divulge his last name. It's worth noting that Mr. Xavier was not obligated to answer any questions during this encounter, let alone provide his last name. The Fifth Amendment safeguards individuals from self-incrimination allowing them to remain silent and decline to answer any queries from law enforcement. In this scenario, Mr. Xavier had already furnished the officer with sufficient identification information. His complete date of birth and first name, which should have been satisfactory for identification purposes, if necessary. A That's what it is. Okay. Give me just a moment. Yeah. right with you. I know, he's a, what's he called, uh, school resource officer, right? 
So you understand the importance of if you're going to open carry, how can I do it? You realize that you still have to be able to prove that you're legally able to carry whatever firearm you carry. You realize that, right? Two, two law enforcement officers, officers two peace officers. It, if you I, are questioned, if, if you I'm are not questioned, breaking the law, then we'll, you, will break it, you, you, you will break the law, but when it comes to firearms, to specifically sidearms specific, okay, specifically sidearms or uh, rather pistols, excuse me, specifically, any peace officer can question anybody open carrying it. I'm going to pull up the code. That's not what it says. Okay. And it, it, you know, specifically, there is law that says you can't hit people based on the basis of firearms alone. You got this? You good? Yeah. So, I'm going to unload this for you. It's not loaded. You got a mag in there. Yeah, but it's not loaded. It's not chambered. Oh, I got you. I apologize. You want to put it in for me? No, I, I will reach for you. Well, if that makes you safe. No. Are you okay with this? I'm going to give this to you as soon as I leave you do whatever you want. Okay? Put it on the mouse. I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Don't put it in the gun? I'm saying as soon as I leave you whatever you want. You want to load it as soon as I take off the other Alright. Alright. I'm going to give you my card. If you have any questions you want to follow up, just have your name in. Absolutely. Alright. Have a great day. Give me just a second. Alright. 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 That's a call for service, don't you? Okay. So for this incident, okay? Gotcha. If you want to look it up, you want to contact the PD, that's never going to reference. I'll know everything. Well, everything's on body camera anyways, but I'll know everything that is here, okay? All right. Any questions? No. Dude, have some ID on you. It's that simple. Yeah, that's okay. the whole point of the Constitution. Okay, that's, that's, Fourth Amendment. That's fine. Okay. Secure my person in favor. We, we, okay. That's fine. That's fine. And in, in the state of Texas, as a Texas peace officer, if I see somebody open carrying a firearm and I have any reason to suspect that they may be unlawfully carrying that firearm, that sidearm. I can request ID. I can. Like, it's, it's reasonable, reasonable suspicion. suspicion. It's reasonable, articulable suspicion. Oh, that's what I just got done explaining to you. Underage. Yeah, and, and the violation was you being underage, not 21. That's what it is. But Stuber said he's probably over 21. He's okay, okay. Well, no, no, no. Exactly. Just, okay, that's, that's that's what she okay. got here. That's I don't know I who you are. Right. No, no, no. I, I get that. Do you, 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 you weren't going to take me out of the handcuffs regardless until I told you. Yeah, so I can confirm. Okay, that's okay. Whether it took a minute longer, two minutes longer, whatever. All right, up, and down, up to that point. Up to that point, you were being. Okay. Well, you just you, say you don't care about it. it, it no, that's I, of course I do. Of course I do. I care about both. Greek, they, deeply. But I also care about people so, respect so. of what the law says. And the law says that as a peace officer, if I suspect anybody who's uh, violating... Only, though? What, specifically, specifically pistol, yeah, because there's specific laws about pistol. You know what they you are. Don't know the Texas code? The open carry law. What's what, that? What's the penal code so I can look it up? Why don't I mean, you look it up? I, I know what the penal code is. is. I don't, what does it say okay. it directly? All right, we're not going to sit here and have a... Because you don't know it. We're not, okay. And that's not what it says. Okay, all right. That's you're, okay. You're free, you're free to go. You can look it up while you want, okay? Like, Unless you really want me to look it up for you, Stuart? I would, I would, I appreciate okay. it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. And I, I don't give Stuart a hard time, because the way you came up to me was... What was that? And I do apologize, because, like I said, I did good interaction with you, and I'm not trying to waste your time or anything like that. After enduring several minutes of unjust detainment, the officer finally released Mr. Xavier from the handcuffs and returned his unlawfully confiscated firearm. However, the incident didn't conclude there, as the officer remained convinced that his actions were lawful under Texas statutes. Foolishly, he attempted to prove. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna let you come over here and and write it down. You can even record it if you want. <laughs> this Section 411.205. The law says that if a person with a license to carry handgun, I mean, in this particular case, because we're open carry now, so okay, okay, a lot of the verbiage hasn't what caught is, up yet, yeah. but is carrying a handgun and is asked by a peace officer to show ID, they must show both. If somebody has a license okay. to carry, but how does that con what, how does that? Oh, so because the LTC. So there's still a lot of catching up that the, the terminology of LTC and open carry has because like I have an LTC but I don't need it anymore. Right. If you did, if you don't have an LTC, you now do not need it. However, if you are open carrying, right? So now the, the, new, the new law with open carry, you still got to be 21, right? right? So if I request ID, you got to show it to prove that you're 21. Driver's license or other ID. Well then, look, man, you can you can go argue it all you want, okay? I will. I that's will. that's fine. All right, you got any questions? No. That's okay, it. that's it. You're free to go. Have a good night. You too, sir.
Oddly enough, the officer demonstrated in real time that he was completely misinformed about the law. We've already covered this law, the one the officer brought up, and we even clarified that it only pertains to individuals with a license to carry firearms. It was evident that Mr. Xavier did not possess such a license in this situation. Thanks for tuning in to US Corrupt Cops. Remember, knowledge is power, and together we can shine a light on injustice. If you believe in holding corrupt individuals accountable, take action now. Subscribe to our channel, like, and share our videos to spread awareness. Let's stand up against injustice and make our voices heard. Together, we can make a difference.